Hi folks, Randy Gildersleeve back with you again, and today we're going to play blues on the ukulele. In fact, I've written a piece for this with the creative title, Ukulele Blues in A. First I'll play through it, and then we'll uh, walk through it a bit more casually and see how it all fits together. So here we go. Two, three, four, one. What I set out to do in writing ukulele blues in A is to demonstrate some of the techniques and ideas that give the blues its shape and sound. And so the first of these ideas I'd like to mention is the idea of, of swing um, or shuffle, it's also called. And what that is, is instead of playing the your eighth notes straight, one and two and three and four and, you shuffle them a little bit. You make the first of each pair a bit longer, like two-thirds of the beat, and then the second of each pair of eighth notes shorter, one-third of the beat. So it would sound like this. That sound, that shuffle or swing idea permeates the blues and it also permeates the other genres that the blues has influenced. The second thing that I'd like to mention is the 12-bar blues form, which blues songs don't have to be in the 12-bar blues form, but many are. And what it is, the 12-bar blues is a 12-measure um, chord progression that, that repeats, and it gives blues a lot of its shape and character and even influences how the lyrics are delivered. Typically, you have three chords. You can have more, but but you typically have three chords and they're the one, four, and five chords of the key. So the key we're in is A, and so um, our chords are A7, which is also known as the one chord, D7, the four chord, four notes away, and E7, the five chord. I mentioned seven, all the chords in this um, example are seventh chords and they give it that sort of almost barbecue sauce, a little bit of flavor that um, gives blues its distinctive sound. In this ukulele blues in A, I've gone through the 12 bar progression twice, and in the first time through, I'm demonstrating some rhythm ideas, primarily playing chords, and the second time through, I'm demonstrating some lead ideas. And I also start with a couple measures that just kind of set it up. So here's my introduction piece, which is the first two measures. And it actually starts on beat two. So I'd count like one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four, and one, three, four. I played six. These are two strings apart, and they're six notes apart. And so notice I'm using, in this case, my middle finger and my third finger, and then I'm using my thumb and my middle finger, and that kind of makes it easy to kind of consistently find those spots, and I'm just picking, like, again, those swing eighth notes. Two, three, four, one, and two, and then an E7 chord, three, four. So the first part was, was built around an A7 chord, and then an E7 chord. So, after the intro, the first round of 12 bars uh, uses a technique that sounds like this, and I'll try to demonstrate it for you in a close-up here. So I'm starting with my E chord, 
and I'm going to hammer on on the third string. It looks like this. So, as you can see, and I'm picking with my index finger, I hammer on to the first fret on the third string. So that's on the and of beat four. Three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. And that gives it a nice rolling, moving sound, and you can do that slower, or you can do it kind of faster like. At the end of the first four measures, I just I added my little finger to the second string to really bring out that A7. So, so there I am. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Then I'm going to slide into a D7 chord that's going to look like this. So first fret to the second fret. Then this note is a B. That's the sixth of this chord. And then a C, which is the seventh of this D7 chord. And this sounds and looks like this. So that's, that'll take some work to fit your fingers in there. You can slide your ring finger back and forth, too, if that works better for you. And then we're back to the A7 for another time of that same idea. And then I played an A7 in another spot. So if you're familiar with G7, I've just moved it up two frets. And you can still hit the fourth string because it's, it's the seventh of the chord, A7. Two and three and four. And then a, just a short rest, reset my fingers onto an E7 chord. So I'm covering at the fourth fret all the strings. And then add my middle finger on the first string at the fifth fret. And this is one and two and three. And four. So just added my little finger briefly. Actually changes it from an E7 into a plain E for just a little bit. Then I move down two frets and do the same thing. One and two and three and four. So I've changed from an E7 chord to a D7 chord. And then I'm going to play something similar to my intro starting on beat one this time. One, two, three. So I kind of worked my way down and then dropped my fingers into the E7 chord. And now I'm ready for the second half of the piece, the second time through the 12 bar blues. And this time we're going to play some lead ideas. So blues music uses some notes from the major scale, but oftentimes it adds two particularly helpful notes, which are the flatted seventh, which in this case is G and also the flat at third, which is C, and then oftentimes you'll go from the flat at third to the major third, C to C sharp. This time through the 12 bar blues, um, almost each measure or each two measures in some ways is kind of a little musical idea, and I've split them up with some rests. So here's the first one. One, two, three, four. Rest. And that goes with an A chord. I start on an A note and use the seventh prominently there too. And here's the second measure, also on the A chord, A7. That time I put the seventh in there, but I also did that C to C sharp. Next measure. So that's just a, an exact repeat of the first measure. And then I'm going to be playing a measure which is going to transition us to the next chord, which is D7. And so here we go. Sounds like this. So this one's a little more technically challenging. I start with two fingers down, one on the third fret, one on the fourth fret. And then you can reach out to the seventh fret, back to the second fret, and then I'm going to slide into that D7 like we did earlier in the chord section. Then we're going to slide up. 
So here it is again. And then we're back to the A chord and a little variation. I'm climbing. And you might want to use your first finger for that whole thing because it'll move you up and position you in just the right place to uh, play our, our next lick, which is on an E7 chord. Pretty classic blues stuff there. And then just move down two frets, and we're going to do the same thing, only this time it lines up with the D7 chord. Okay, then our last bit is kind of a classic turnaround sort of lick, and it's going to go from the A walking down to our E7 chord. So there's the seventh fret, and that's our E. Here's the lick for the E7. So way up here is, if you think again of G7 and you slide it up the neck to the ninth fret, that's E7. And then my last chord is an A9. And so I'm covering three, the first three strings at the seventh fret with one finger, and I'm using my index finger to play just the fourth string on the sixth fret. And I'm doing a strum like this. And you can slide off, or you could just hit it once. You can take some of these different ideas, whether they're rhythm ideas or lead ideas, and have them in your vocabulary and just sort of plug them in uh, when the situation is, is right. And this is true of not just blues, but lots of kinds of music. So um, give these things a try. Uh, Put them on some blues songs that you enjoy playing, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.